One of my favorite fish to catch in the fall months is a striped bass. Why? Well, a couple of reasons. Number one, stripers get big. You can catch great, big, long, powerful fish. Number two, they're great fighters. They'll give you a real hard pull for your money on regular tackle or light tackle. And number three, they're a real challenge to locate and catch. You've got to use good electronics. You've got to be able to get out there and scan the bottom and the surface of the water, see where the fish are, and then you've got to trick them into biting. We're going to talk about all of that coming up in the next half hour. Why? Because Fox Sports Outdoors is on the air right now. You're watching the only program with weekly fishing reports and real-time outdoor news from the Southwest region. This is Fox Sports Outdoors. Hey everyone, glad you're with us for this week's episode. Fall is here things have cooled off, the water temperature has cooled off. It's time to go fishing. One of the most active species in the fall are striped bass. And on this week's episode, we're going to talk about how to locate and catch those at a reservoir or river system near you. I've got the Nitro Z20 and the Mercury Pro XS Optimax 250 ready to launch. And for our test tube this week, this is Lake Tawakini. It's a great big lake. And it's an experimental lake because the Texas Parks and Wildlife Department regularly stocks hybrid striped bass and purebred stripers in this lake. And it's a great lake for us to pattern some electronics, show you some of the habits of stripers in the fall, what they're going to be doing, and how you can replicate that on a lake or river system near you and catch some stripers of your very own. While we're out on Lake Tawakini today, we're going to be sending you around your local region for this week's fishing reports from our expert team of insider reporters. We're going to cover both freshwater and saltwater fishing for the upcoming couple of weeks to help you go out and be able to catch some. Right now, let's get things started back out on Lake Tawakini and let's get you all the way back to the FSN studios, get things started with your weekend planner. It appears both days this weekend will offer fair game fish activity according to the salooner tables. Peak morning hours will take place before sunrise and the best evening action should begin at 4.01 on Saturday and 4.58 on Sunday. Look for the sun to rise at 7.41 and set at 6.41. And evenings will feature a waning moon that is 89% visible. Stay with us for freshwater and coastal fishing information from around the region. Plus, I'll return with 2015 Bassmaster Classic Champion Casey Ashley with this week's Ask the Pro Question. We're coming right back. Fox Sports Outdoors is brought to you by Motor Guide's new wireless and easy to use XI3. XI batteries powering the world forward. Waypoint Marine, the Gulf Coast's leading saltwater boating specialist. And Strike King, designed by the pros, fished by you. Let's show you off a little bit. There we go. Well, there's a start. Welcome back, everybody. We've made it out. Striper, come up here, buddy. Uh -uh. Come up here, Padna. Well, we are off to a start. Look at that big old splash. He's pulling drag. He's got a mouthful of my big old spoon. Oh yeah, come up here. Let's show you off a little bit. There we go. Well, there's a start. Welcome back, everybody. We've made it out. And that one is a feisty dude right there now. He's got treble hooks all in his snoot. Just a beautiful, long, skinny striper right there for you. Put that one back. And uh, I'm going to lock myself in position here because there's probably more. So all I've got to do is push one button anchor on my Motor Guide XI5 and get me stopped. Let me set the stage for you here. We've made it out on Lake Tawakini and Fall has hit, folks. We've lost about 15 to 20 degrees in the surface temperature of most all the lakes in our region. We're past the lake turnover, and that's the point in the season where the cooler water down at the bottom exchanges places with the hot water up at the surface. And now these fish are going to go to feeding. 
They haven't fed real well all summer. Stripers in the summertime typically feed twice a day. They feed early in the morning, first daylight, and late in the evening, the last light. Now we've turned the page into fall and these fish will feed all day long. We're already up in the midday, early afternoon hours, and you can still catch stripers this time of the day because the water's cooler and they're feeding all day long. Stay with us, I'm gonna get re-rigged here. We're off to a start, cooler water, cooler weather, football season in full swing, what can be better? Good fishing in the fall. Hi folks, this week's Lone Star Lakes is brought to you once again by the good folks at Brecklin Ranch, who remind you not only do they have spectacular hunting opportunities, but they can handle your corporate outings and weddings as well. Now this week we're gonna do something a little different. I get a lot of folks asking about kayak fishing. Kayak fishing is one of the fastest growing portions of the fishing industry, and there are some great places in Texas to do just that. We're gonna start with Palo Pinto Mountain State Park, the newest state park in the Texas Parks and Wildlife System. It's got little 90 acre Lake Tucker, which has been recently stocked with catfish by Parks and Wildlife and has some good bass fishing. Now there are no facilities, no amenities, not even a boat ramp. So your kayak, your canoe, or your small aluminum boat are about the only ways you're gonna get out on this lake. Cat fishermen can fish from the bank. Use your cut baits, use your prepared baits, stink baits, and so forth. Bass fishermen, you'll want to use topwaters, sinkos, spinner baits, and your jigs to work the reeds that line the banks and the rocks up near the dam. That's this week's Lone Star Lakes, brought to you by the good folks at Breckland Ranch. Be sure and check us out on Facebook, Lone Star Lakes. Hey folks, Captain Greg Varm here with this week's Fox Southwest Outdoors Report. Hey, we're gonna start this week's report over in Sabine. Up in North Sabine, lots of bird action. And with each passing cold front, more shrimp and bait fish will be flushed from the marshes and the birds will tell us where the trout are feeding. Soft plastics and live shrimp under a popping court have both been successful. However, many times if you're catching lots of schoolies, tie on a big topwater. I like a Rapala skitter walk and many times the smaller fish will leave it alone and the bigger trout will attack it. Also in North Sabine, we have redfish in the marshes as usual. When the winds of fall make it tough to work the birds in the main lake, tuck back in the marsh and find the mullet working the shorelines and the redfish aren't going to be far. Now let's move over to Bolivar. I'm going to talk about a great place for our non-boating anglers to enjoy some amazing fishing in the fall. Rollover Pass is hot right now. Redfish, both slots and bull reds. Also, we're beginning to see the start of the overly anticipated fall flounder run. Both soft plastics and live mullet are working great over at Rollover. Fall fishing has finally arrived. Water temperatures are finally falling and amazing things are happening up and down the coast. Remember, if you want to go fishing or duck hunting, Galveston or Freeport, and also remember we have lodging at Bay's Landing, give us a call, numbers on your screen, or check out our website. Hey, I'm Captain Greg Worm. I'll see you guys next time. You catch one species and you've got a chance to catch all three on back to back to back cast. Uh, it's a white bass. Big white bass though. Well, when you're out here doing this, you're going to catch a little bit of everything. When, when you're employing this technique in the fall, the stripers, the hybrid stripers, and the white bass will definitely all mix because they're all feeding, they're all eating the same things, and uh, they're all going to mix in the exact same area. So, generally speaking, you'll find one, you'll find all three, and most reservoirs that have hybrids and stripers also have white bass so you're going to be catching a mixture but these techniques that we're talking about will work on all three species there's another bite missed him so uh hang in here we'll fish around a little bit more give you a couple of more pieces of information that may help you go out golly that's that's bigger than a white bass well i thought we were gonna run out to a quick break but obviously we're not quite yet that is a hybrid striper. And a lot better one. There we go. Get in here. Get in here on that seat. Sit on that seat. No, you sit on that seat. Like I told you. Sit down. He won't sit down. Okay, there we go. And you got to be really careful when you're handling, especially these hybrids. They're so powerful. And when you've got 
three hooks flopping around. You've got to be really careful. That's exactly what I was talking about, though, is that it's a cool little spoon I'm using there, but if you catch, you catch one species and you've got a chance to catch all three on back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back cast. So there's a nice hybrid for you right there. Okay, now, before another one bites, let's get out to a fishing report here real quick and uh, we'll get you some more information very shortly. Hey friends, this is old Cajun Phil with the Cajun Paradise Lodge of Georgia. Just let everyone know we've been getting inundated with rain, north winds, and I tell you what, it's kind of chilly out there. But you know what? We catch it in red fish. We had several boats go out today. They all lemon out with big old fat red fish. And you know, it's like that all across the state. We talked to our friends at Delacroix, Hopedale, Shell Beach, Homer, and Venice, and they all catch a red fish right now. Not a lot of speckled trout. But the redfish bite is on. Um, as far as the bass fishing scene goes, we talked to our guy Joe Jocelyn up at Toledo Bend. Joe said they're catching good bass right now, but they're not catching them shallow. They're in about 15, 18 foot of water throwing Carolina rigs. And we also talked to a couple of our guys that's been catching some crappie, better known as white perch here in Louisiana, uh, there at Toledo Bend. They're catching them around 20, 25 foot of water. And they're catching them on live shiners over treetops. A couple more of these cold fronts, the flounder bite will be on. Give us a call. This is old Cajun Phil. Send happy fishing. May God bless it. You know what? We're going to see you next week right here on Fox Sports Southwest. Bye-bye. There's one got it. Let's see what I got this time. Oh, it's a white. It's a white. Well, hang with us. We're catching everything, man. I tell you, this, this swimming up technique's working for all three species. And the fish seem to be aggressively feeding. And uh, once you get into an area like this, you want to lock down, stay there, because the fish will just roam and feed. And the later it gets in the afternoon, they'll tend to even push up shallower. I'm only up at about 12 feet of water right now. And they may even go shallower than that as we get a little bit later. Hang in there, we'll be right back. Fox Sports Outdoors is brought to you by Nitro Performance Fishing Boats. Champions aren't born, they're made. Mercury Outboards, go boldly. Gulf Shores and Orange Beach, Alabama. Plan your fishing vacation and catch the details at orangebeach.com slash fishing. And Lorenz and the new Hook 2, the world's easiest fish finder. Push your button, let it go back to the bottom. Now I'm doing actually something a little different today than I normally do. Here's one. Push the button, let it go back, hit the bottom. Hey everybody, welcome back. We are doing some fall striper and hybrid striper fishing today and there's a small hybrid for you right there and I want to kind of talk to you a little bit about what you need to be looking for where do you where do you find these fish in the fall just a decent sized hybrid for you right there nothing real big you want to be looking for two things structure and bait so the structure is that we're on a big, long underwater ridge out here. You want to have something where the stripers and hybrids can herd the bait, push them up shallow onto some sort of an upslope. And you want that upslope in the fall to be fairly shallow. You want it to be 8, 10, 12 feet deep, something like that, falling off into 25, 30, 40 feet of water. And then secondly, you want to find bait. So I'll show you on the graph, on my chart, on my... Lawrence Elite TI here. Then I'll show you on my other Elite TI, you can see these big balls of shad, big balls of bait fish. And they're herding those balls of shad up the sides of these humps. And you can literally just catch all three species, throwing back right in the exact same area. Find those two things, structure and bait, and you'll find them in the fall. Hey, not all of our lakes came up several feet recently like Lake Keystone did, but we had rain at most places across the state. As a result, our waters are in really good shape for this time of year in Oklahoma. 
Two good reports in particular. One is Lake Hefner. Crappie fishing is good there off the dam with crappie jigs and minnows. Striper fishing and hybrid is also good in Lake Hefner at this time. Bass fishing is good at Lake Kanawha. Go with your quicker moving baits. Go with your umbrella rig, your crankbait, your spinner baits, buzz bait across the top. Bass fishing at Kanawha. And of course, we're just a few days away from the start of our official winter trout season, November 1 through March 15th, where we have periodic stockings of rainbow trout in select waters across the state. Places like Medicine Park, Watonga, Carl Etling, and Roberts Cave, get those stockings, can be a lot of fun, artificials, and commercially prepared baits. And of course, we have year-round trout fisheries, Lower Mountain Fork, Lower Illinois Rivers that are spectacular this time of year due to the changing foliage, so be sure and take advantage of the beautiful weather, the beautiful scenery, and the great trout fishing in the state of Oklahoma. You can catch them in the state right now, but you can't catch them if you don't go. There's one. Coming at me. A little striper. No, that's a little hybrid, actually. So as soon as I get this fish unhooked, I want to show you Something I'm doing that's a little bit different than my normal reeling technique. That's a kind of a long skinny hybrid striper for you right there. Not a bad one. So here's what I do. If you're in a bunch of mixed fish like we are today and you're catching a bunch of smaller white bass and you wanna try to pick through those and you wanna catch just the hybrids or just the stripers, Throw it out there, let it go to the bottom. And then as I mentioned, crank it four or five times, six, seven, maybe. Push your button, let it go back to the bottom. The hybrids and the stripers always want it on the swim. They want it swimming up. Push the button, let it go back to the bottom. You don't want to jig it and hop it off the bottom. White bass will get it that way. Now I'm doing something a little different today. A lot of what I've done today is I've let the wind carry me and I'm trying to cover a lot of water. So what I'll do is let the wind blow me along and then I'll lift that rod tip up real high like this and swim that bait up high off the bottom and then just let it go back down to the bottom. Let the boat drift along, swim it up again like this. See how high I've got my rod. And then drift along, let it fall back and you just let the wind push you along and let the momentum of the boat cover a bunch of water and you can find the fish that way by just drifting down it, like in this case, this ridge that I'm fishing, I can cover the whole ridge by just letting the wind push me along, swim that bait up, drop it back. Swim it up again, drop it back, and you can cherry pick those hybrids and stripers out of these white bass. You can always watch our latest episode on the front page of our website at foxsportsoutdoors.com. Catch up on past episodes by clicking the archive button and learn about fishing techniques and new gear at our how-to page. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter for new fishing videos every day. Simply search for Fox Sports Outdoors and click the like button on Facebook and follow button on Twitter. And watch a new episode every week on any device by downloading the free Waypoint TV app on your phone tablet, computer, or smart TV. Fox Sports Outdoors is brought to you by Lou's. Feel the difference. Gene LaRue and Bobby Garland. We know bass and crappie from heads to tails. And by Glacier Glove. Stay outdoors longer with our gloves, hats, and shades. Welcome back everyone. It's time for the Ask the Pro segment where viewers get expert insights from professional insiders. This week's question comes from Alex who asks, what are the features to look for when buying a new trolling motor? For the answer, we checked with 2015 Bass Master Classic champion Casey Ashley. I'm a simple kind of guy. I've been with Motor Guide my whole life, my whole career. Um, you know, I keep my fishing simple. I like Motor Guide because it's, it's a simple deal. You put it in the water, it's never going to let you down. Guaranteed, tried and true. So if you're looking for a tro trolling motor that's going to get you where you need to go and get back, Motor Guide is the way to go. Now, depending on what size boat you're going you're gonna to buy, or the size boat that you got, or how much you're going to use, you know, if you're going to be a sure enough day in, day out tournament angler, you know, I would go with like the, the 36 volt model, 109 pound thrust, whatever it is that they got now. I don't even know what the new model is, what pound thrust it is, but 36 volt is the way you want to go because you can get on it all day long and stay on it from daylight to dark. 
And I have been, you know, accused of uh, forgetting to plug my, my trolling motor batteries in at night. So I have gone two days on them, but you know, it's never gonna let you down. So you can't go wrong with motor guy. Thank you, Casey. If you have something to ask one of the pros, visit our website and follow the Ask the Pro link to submit your question. Now let's take a look at this week's Big Catch winner. We're back at the boat ramp and it's time right now for someone to get their 15 seconds of fame in the Big Catch of the Week contest. Someone's big fish photo gets shown on television right now. He is John Lindley of New Braunfels, Texas, showing a 28 inch speckled trout he caught out of Redfish Bay on the Texas Gulf Coast. And here are some bonus photos for you. Here is Jacob Elizondo with his big one from the same area. David Garfield gets his big one shown on television. Kathy Wofford gets hers shown as well. And Jeff Tillman caught a great big one as well. All of these from that same area of Redfish Bay on the Texas Gulf Coast. If you'd like to be our next winner, just go to our website at foxsportsoutdoors.com. Click on the Big Catch of the Week area on the right side of the homepage. Follow the instructions to enter your information and attach your big fish photo, and you might be our next winner. Next up on the gear segment, here's some of the gear you'll need to catch stripers and hybrids in the upcoming fall and even the winter months. You need some beefy tackle. This is the Lose Team Lose Custom Pro Speed Stick, and this particular one is 7 foot 11 inches long. It's got a lot of good heavy action here in the base of it, but a nice flexible tip as well. You can make big long casts with these swim baits and these spoons like we were throwing today. And I've got it paired with the Team Lose Hyper Mag casting reel. You can cast these baits a mile with this reel. It's the best reel in the Lose lineup that I've fished thus far. Now, as far as the baits are concerned, here are the ones that I would have handy on my rods and on my casting deck anytime I'm fishing for these fish. It begins on your left with a swim bait. That's about a half ounce to a one ounce lead jig head with a Jean LaRue Sweet Swimmer rigged on the back of it. A lot of action in that tail. Then I would have a couple of spoons. That's about a three quarter ounce jigging spoon or a slab type bait, that chartreuse one. The next one over is a much bigger bait. That's about a four and a half or a five inch long heavy jigging spoon. And then the next one is a Strike King Series 5 deep diving crankbait. We'll dive 12, 14 feet, which is perfect for stripers and hybrids in the fall. No one gets through life without going through some kind of a rough patch or a difficulty or even a tragedy or a crisis. We as humans, when we get in those circumstances, we tend to either whine or blame or look for some kind of sympathy. Wise people I know do something very unusual. They look for what it is in that circumstance that they can learn from and that can make them a better person. It just may help them out the next time they encounter a similar difficulty. I heard a very wise person at one point say you can learn much more during life's trials than you ever can during life's triumphs. I hope you enjoyed our trip today to Lake Tawakini, one of my favorite striper and hybrid striper lakes in the entire region. And if you'd like to book your very own trip to catch these fish at this reservoir, you can do so by contacting Michael and Terry Littlejohn, the information you see on your screen. They stay on top of the stripers, hybrids, white bass, and during the winter months, the trophy blue catfish that swim out there, they get to be huge in this lake. You would enjoy a trip with some really nice folks that got an entire team that guides for them, and you can contact them at the information you see on your screen. Thanks for joining us this week. I hope you learned something that will help you catch these stripers and hybrids. They'll be on these patterns all the way through the fall and the early winter months until it gets really, really cold. Till next week, I'm Barry Stokes saying be safe, have fun. Bye-bye, y'all.